okay guys now we have to stop uh, and get on with this uh, stuff okay so the important points that Sahil brought up is uh, this is the important point the first point is uh, this okay um, uh, fix coupon bond okay so when I say that bond and loan pricing so whatever I discussed with respect to we have only discussed bond pricing okay whatever I've discussed with respect to bond pricing applies to loans also all right and loans are usually most of the loan pricing is on a floating rate basis okay uh, because banks are funding on a floating rate basis most of the loans are uh, loan syndications are done by banks okay and so this there they basically fund on a floating rate basis so they try to match it to a floating rate uh, structure okay so uh, this is for floating rate uh, debt okay So now the benchmark so the important point that sahil raised the first important point is that we have already talked to this this is a nomenclature matter this goes there so i've already told you about the libor scandal so the important point that sahil raised was that if it is we are talking about an intel fraud frn being priced at uh, 2020 uh, due 2020 a 10 year frn being priced at 75 basis points over three month libor okay if you are saying that then so what he's saying is so where did the government benchmark go because LIBOR is not the government bond benchmark, okay? LIBOR is only meant to reflect, uh, LIBOR reflects roughly uh, AAA, uh, double A rated uh, money center bank credit risk, okay? So let's say LIBOR uh, reflects uh, credit risk of, let me raise this. Double A rated banks, okay? So. LIBOR reflects a double A credit risk. Okay, so what if the question that uh, Sahil is asking is if you're saying that an FRN is being priced at 75 BP over three month LIBOR, then what happened to that government bond benchmark? Okay, so the point is that wh where do you think the government bond, uh, the, the uh, for three month LIBOR, okay, for the same period on the yield curve, the same point on the yield curve, there is a three month maturity. So do you think the government, uh, government bond yield or the government bill yield for three months? The YTM on the government bill, uh, the treasury bill, is that going to be lower than LIBOR or higher than LIBOR? Lower. 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 Everyone is clear? Yes. Is everyone convinced that the government the government treasury yield? So if you're looking at US dollar LIBOR, the US treasury three month li, uh, three month US treasury bill, the YTM on the US treasury three month, uh, the US treasury, uh, US three month treasury bill, okay? Uh, is it going to be lower than LIBOR or higher than LIBOR? Lower than LIBOR. That Arihant is not convinced. Who is saying lower than LIBOR? Double A. No, Giri. Why should it be lower than LIBOR? No, use the mic. Give him the mic quickly. Practice quick, fast baton relay techniques and pass the mic. Yes. Yeah, so why should the uh, US uh, three month treasury bill yield be lower than the uh, three month LIBOR? Voice is not coming through the mic. Okay, guys. Yes. Yes, yes. The, you're not holding it, maybe close enough. Hello. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay forget the mic just let's forget the mic because most of you are i don't know why you you have to be conscious of the fact that your voice is not coming through the mic see bible was able to speak through the mic sometimes one minute sometimes the mic this is the part of public speaking that you guys should learn all mics are not going to be configured the same way you need to be conscious of whether your voice is coming through if it's not coming then hold it closer to your mouth otherwise sometimes push it away these adjustments you have to do on your own okay so this is all part of your training okay go ahead yes then the investors who are seeking to invest their money, they will invest in the bonds in instead of that labor. So the private investors who are uh, who are taking money for with the, as with the benchmark of labor. Then they will not be able to do that because that yeah well you what you mean is not private is investors you mean issuers yes issuers okay so what he's saying okay your answer is i understand what you're saying that's a consequence of this being higher but the uh, the correct, correct way to answer this obviously is that because the government's credit risk is obviously much lower than any private entity 
So if a private entity is borrowing at three month LIBOR at whatever percentage X, okay. So if three month LIBOR is X percent, then the uh, the government treasury bill yield has to be lower than X percent because the risk is lower, the default risk is lower on the government bond yield, uh, the government bill yield on the government treasury bill. So therefore, uh, the the return also will be lower. That is how you should answer it as a finance student. So you have to make you have to make this connection between risk and return. You have to say that private sector double uh, A rated banks are borrowing, and these are private sector banks that are borrowing at LIBOR. And so, since the the, the government is a uh, better credit risk than any other uh, private company, uh, private entity. So therefore, the government's uh, risk being lower. Okay. Therefore, their return on a government debt security should also be lower. Is this clear? That's how you should answer it. Okay, logically. Okay, so LIBOR reflects credit risk of a double of double A rated banks. So the the um, I'm not going to write government treasury all the time. Treasury is understood to apply government. Okay, treasury bill yield. I'm just going to write YTM for yield. Okay, will be lower than. LIBOR. Okay, there have been in the in the in the aftermath of the uh, GFC and the abnormal monetary policy that has been followed, there have been some freak occasions where actually not at the at the in the money markets, but in the bond markets there have been some freak occasions where actually private sector, I mean interest rate swap rates have uh, gone below, which is essentially a double A rated credit spread has gone below the uh, the total cost has gone below the uh, government treasury bill. Okay, uh, government treasury bond rate, but th that, those are freak uh, events. But theoretically, they should always be lower than LIBOR. Okay, because you understand, you understand why. Okay, risk return. I'm just going to write risk return here so that you remember the logic. All right. Okay, so this is the first thing. So therefore, now here this brings us to an important point, which is there's something called a TED spread. Okay, if you look in that book which I've given you, that risk management solution standard chartered book, you'll find the mention of the TED spread. You should know this. Okay, part of our coverage of debt capital markets, you should understand what a TED spread is. A TED spread essentially is the TED stands for Treasury Euro Dollar Spread. Okay. Okay. Treasury Euro dollar spread. This is a the TED spread stands for. Uh, let me write it here. Okay, the TED stands for Treasury Euro dollar. Okay. Now, what is this Euro dollar? Remember that LIBOR is. We don't have the uh, the time to get into the detailed macroeconomics of Euro dollar deposits. But essentially, these are deposits that are domiciled outside the country. Okay, uh, the currency of which is being. I, I'm not phrasing it properly. I need some time to phrase it out, but the point is the euro dollar deposits are deposits in currencies which are uh, where the deposits are domiciled outside the uh, country, okay, of of that particular currency, okay. So, for instance, the dollar deposit in London is a euro dollar deposit. Yen deposit in London is a euro dollar deposit. Okay, this is clear to everyone. Okay, so the point is this entire big euro market that we have, this whole LIBOR business of which trillions of dollars of debt. Okay, the entire fixed floating rate debt market and the interest rate swap market will shut down if we get rid of LIBOR. Okay, without a proper replacement. So trillions of dollars of debt have been priced off LIBOR and this stuff has been going on since 1980s, since the 1980s when the euro markets really took off. Okay, and huge amounts of money are raised. Okay, so capital raising, uh, understanding the euro markets is very important, mainly centered in London and there is some activity in New York as well, but mainly most of it is the bulk of it is in London. Okay, so now what you have is uh, this treasury euro dollar spread. Uh, so these, so essentially, let's put it this way: LIBOR is. I'm just writing YTM all the time just to avoid having to write a big word like yield. Okay, so LIBOR is the YTM on euro dollar deposits. Okay, all right. So therefore, when we talk about LIBOR, it's the interest rate that is being paid on euro dollar deposits. So that means. Essentially, a three-month LIBOR, three-month US dollar LIBOR is a uh, the three-month interest rate on a US dollar, Euro dollar deposit in in uh, in uh, in London. Okay. Now, remember when I when I taught when I taught you guys the initial taxonomy part of financial of financial markets, I must have mentioned. I think you've forgotten, but I would have mentioned that whenever you're referring to this thing here, if you're referring to um, this, if you're referring to this thing here this okay if you're referring to this euro usd this is spot euro usd spot fx okay 
So that's why I told you that you should always never say Euro dollar. If you're referring to the foreign exchange markets, don't, don't just say Euro dollar, say Euro dollar FX. Okay, that is meant to distinguish, uh, make sure that you're talking, I mean, make it clear that you're talking about the foreign exchange markets, because otherwise if you say Euro dollar, you could be referring to Euro dollar deposits. Okay, and there's a very important interest rate, the most important, probably one of the two most important interest rate futures contracts, which is the futures of the three month Euro dollar deposits. Okay, so there is a very active treasury uh, f uh, futures market, not not treasury market, but a futures market in 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 the U.S. Okay, the, in the on the CME, there is a contract called the three month euro dollar futures contract. Okay, which is where you bet on the level of the three month euro dollar deposit. Okay, so if you have a three month euro dollar futures contract trading for the March maturity, say a particular maturity in March, what you are betting on through that futures contract is what will be the fixing for three month uh, uh, euro dollar LIBOR in London on the 15th of March. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, okay, so there is a very, there are some very important markets, which is the euro dollar deposit market in London. There is the very important three month euro dollar depo uh, deposit futures contract in the US. So these are meant to be distinct. These are the, you have to mention, uh, when you discuss something like, when you use a word like euro dollar, you have to be very clear about what you're talking about. Okay. So therefore to avoid confusion with these other interest rate uh, contracts, which are also called euro dollars. Okay. When you talk about the foreign exchange markets, you should always say euro dollar FX. Are you following what I'm saying? Why I'm saying this? Okay. All right. So, um, where are we now? So LIBOR is the ITM on the euro dollar deposit. Now the TED spread, okay, is that this is a term that you need to be aware of. You can refer to the, I'm just writing this RMS, okay. Uh, you can find out where the page is, which page number it is. You can do some, if you even if you do some searching in it, uh, it'll be good for you uh, because all those instruments are still valid. Everything that has been described in that book, okay, is still valid. Okay, now LIBOR is the, so, so here what we need to understand is, there is uh, another aspect that we have to look at, which is the interest rate swap market. Okay, what I will do here is that. Um, okay, so let's put this as the so the TED spread is basically a general uh, term for any kind of difference. Okay, so a TED spread first, let me write it this way that a TED spread is. is a species not correctly written okay is a species of credit spread do you understand that based on what i have told you now as a uh, based on what i've told you as to what the ted spread is the ted spread is this difference between the euro dollar interest rate okay uh, the interest rate on euro dollar deposits okay and uh, the us treasury okay yield Com the us treasury yield for the same maturity Okay, so whenever you're discussing TED spread, normally we are referring to the three month maturity, but you could be looking at nine months also or 12 months also. Okay, so you can specify that. Okay, but normally we are talking about the TED spread at three months, but in the name itself, there's nothing that ties you to a particular maturity. So the TED spread is merely the difference between the yield on three months uh, on euro dollar deposits and the uh, treasury, uh, the comparative, uh, the, the corresponding treasury yield for that maturity. Is that clear? For the treasury bill yield or the treasury security yield okay so can you see that it's a species of credit spread because what is LIBOR or euro dollar deposits LIBOR is referring to what grade of credit risk double A right so if I'm subtracting if I'm telling you that the credit debt spread at three month at the three month period the debt spread is say 45 basis points that means the double A double A uh, yield the double A yield for double A credits okay the yield for double A credits is 45 basis points higher than the uh, government bond yield for that maturity. The government, uh, the treasury bill yield. Are you following? Yes, sir. What? That's a very contrived yes. I think most people are not following. Except for Sahil has followed. So, TED spread, do you, do you understand? So, if we are saying TED, TED is only nothing but treasury euro dollar spread. And euro dollar deposits, okay, with and the interest rate on those deposits we refer to as LIBOR, okay. So therefore, the interest rate on euro dollar deposits is effect, reflecting the cost of borrowing, okay, total cost of borrowing for double A rated banks, okay, okay, or generally any other double A rated because mainly it's banks who are borrowing in the LIBOR market, okay. So that's why we say double A rated banks. 
but the total cost of LIBOR, suppose three month LIBOR is let's say if we just do it here to make it a little easier for you guys. Um, we don't have the cap, uh, maybe we'll have this here now. The calc file will come up, okay? So we just add one more sheet here. All right, so if the whatever, let's say three month euro dollar deposit, the yield is, uh, let's say 4.5%, uh, okay? Let's just say, okay, let me just add one. Um, let me just add on, uh, add a uh, sheet. Is it ready now? So let's just call it dead. All right. So it's let's say the three month LIBOR is. I'll make this. Okay. So let's say this is four point five percent. Okay. And let's say that uh, three month bill is is let's say. 3.75 percent okay so the 10 spread is is what is it yeah so the 4.5 minus the 3.75 this is our 10 spread okay so what have we done how did we derive the 10 spread if you remember when we were looking at these uh, when we were looking at these um, uh, other credit spread charts here okay when we are looking at this BAA credit spread chart how remember this is a direct plot of the spread okay 2.3 the current value means B, BAA how did they derive this data series this current value of 2.3 that you're seeing how did they derive this data, data series they looked at the average yield on the, the BAA bonds okay understand how the series is derived okay the average they looked at the average yield for BAA bonds and then from that they just uh, for 10 years this is the 10 year yeah this is 10 years okay so this is a plot of the BAA credit spread okay how did they how did they derive this uh, data for this series they looked at the average yield for 10 year BAA corporate bonds and then from that they just uh, deducted the yield on the 10 year te treasury note for each period is this clear that's how they derived it okay so this is what time series data or cross-sectional data time series right so they have plotted it over a period of time that same variable so that means every day they did this exercise and they plotted the data and then they just joined the dots and got this line okay so this is the way you derive a credit spread sorry yeah that's what the data say what that's what the narration says right what does it say right so when they're deriving and spread that means obviously what they have not mentioned they have taken the average yield on 10 year corporate bond but that's obvious you would not take five year corporate bonds and from that you would not deduct 10 year treasuries and derive a credit spread you have to always work on the same point of the curve okay that you have to be very clear about like you can't deduct you can't take an amount in japanese yen and deduct it from an amount in indian rupees okay so you have to be on the same point of the curve obviously that's understood so 10 year corporate bonds minus YTM on 10-year corporate bonds minus YTM on 10-year treasuries. Yes, sir. That's how you got the credit spread? Yes. Sir. Okay. So what did we do here? Did we not do the same thing? Yes. Sir. What did we do? We took the uh, YTM on three-month LIBOR and then we, uh, from three-month LIBOR, we uh, deducted the YTM on the uh, three-month treasury bill. <clears throat> so what are we doing? We are taking a, uh, a non-sovereign uh, cost of debt. We are taking a non-sovereign cost of debt and from that we are deducting the sovereign cost of debt. That's how we got the credit spread. Yes. So that's why I'm saying that now this particular spread is called a TED spread because one of the legs is a uh, euro dollar deposit. Is this clear? Yes. Okay. So that's why I'm saying a TED. That's why now you understand my statement that a TED spread is a, is a species of um, uh, credit spread yes. is this clear now yes. we always like to use I like to use, it's kind of maybe it gets a little hackneyed but it's important to use this uh, language 
species and genus so that you have a very good understanding of uh, because a lot of the stuff we know we think we have just taught you and you remembered it and you understood it but then we find that you've not understood a lot of basic stuff so it, there's no harm in rehashing stuff okay all right so a tent spread is a species of credit spread okay now while you're doing tent spreads it's important as the part of your net capital markets understanding to bring in the idea of an interest rate swap although we are supposed to be doing swaps at a later date as a as a big instrument class because there are many other categories of swap okay so uh, but let's see if we can get a um, <coughs> ideally <coughs> let me try and look at okay so what you need to understand is that the this euro dollar deposit uh, this double a uh, the double a uh, credit spread okay now typically because euro dollar deposits are only from uh, let's say euro dollar deposits are from one month to 12 months okay now suppose you want to know what is the double uh, a what is the double a cost of borrowing okay beyond 12 months okay can you can you uh, construct a double a uh, credit spread curve beyond 12 months because euro dollar deposits are actually only for one month one month to 12 months okay because euro dollar deposits are a money market instruments uh, they are a money market instrument so what is one of the features of a money market instrument initial maturity has to be less than or equal actually we should say less than or equal to okay because you can have one year bills okay those are considered as one money market so less than or equal to right so euro dollar deposits that strict euro dollar deposit curve will stop at 12 months okay now what if you need to know what is the equivalent cost of borrowing if i want to go further down the curve if i want to go to longer maturities like five years ten years etc okay now let's here try to uh, let me try to find out um we have to spend a little bit of time i think to try and okay just give me a little bit of time let me just uh, detach from this for a while and look for um, this is not um, the so the question that we are talking about is suppose now suppose that what you've done let's take this example of a we are going to discuss an interest rate swap uh, just to give you the understanding of the irs curve okay and uh, what is the meaning of extending this uh, euro dollar deposit uh, yield curve which runs strictly speaking only from one month to 12 months okay because the deposits don't run for longer periods can you extend this curve and give me double a rated credit uh, cost of borrowing for further out in the curve like two years five years ten years okay so the answer to that is that when you want to extend the euro dollar deposit uh, yield curve okay the correct thing to look at is the interest rate the irs curve okay the irs uh, uh, yield curve so we'll just explain to you for that you need to understand what the irs is okay so although irs should be studied in the swaps module along with there are many other kinds of swaps but i'll just give you a brief idea to understand this and then you'll get a sense of the interest rate uh, risk management aspect as well now suppose that uh, where did we discuss now suppose in intel has issued this frn now how let's say this is a 10 year frn because we're talking about 2016 and this is 2026 this is clear okay so now um, let me find this uh, interest rate swap part here somewhere how do we go to full screen anyway it doesn't seem to have that option i have to go to f11 yes who is it okay okay just find out who is standing at the gate what do they want maybe let's say you go we'll find out what happened okay let him give it to rajesh and just tell him to give it to rajesh okay yeah okay all right now let's see where the interest rate swaps are okay 
So, interest rate and currency swaps, page 8, okay. okay so, let's go to page 8 and see. Very... Okay, guys, let's look at this. Let's look at this one example. This example, look at figure two. Okay, look at figure two on page seven. So let me refer to this here. Okay. What is the question is what is the equivalent of what is the equivalent of the <coughs> what is the equivalent of the euro dollar deposit yield curve okay further for for longer maturities Wait, what is happening? I'm going to deduct two marks from your team. <laughs> you guys are behaving like a bunch of kids. <laughs> now we have to move. Have we moved uh, Goyal to your team? Yeah. So this will go to minus six. You want some more marks? You can keep on doing that, whatever you're doing. Okay. All right. <coughs> yeah here all right so so the question is try to understand this question now you've understood what the euro dollar deposit yield curve is because you have these euro dollar deposits in various currencies which are being uh, fixed every day for different maturities okay you take us dollars you take uh, swiss francs etc which are being fixed one month two months three months every day they fix it at 11 a.m okay in london so now you get that you get those uh, LIBOR rates for one month to 12 months okay because these are money market instruments <laughs> Now the question is, what if uh, somebody wants to know essentially what the Intel Treasury is concerned about is they've borrowed through an FRN uh, for 10 years. Okay, so the FRN is linked to six, uh, three month LIBOR. Okay, and uh, they have borrowed with that F using that FRN for 10 years. Now they are a little bit concerned that uh, this, uh, what if three month LIBOR starts rising rapidly. Okay, because right now maybe three month LIBOR is one and a half percent. Okay. Uh, but maybe in in two years time it might have risen to about four and a half percent so all my my all my cash flow budgeting for my project which I'm financing with this loan everything is going to go haywire because my cost of debt is going to shoot up okay so I have a concern there so I, I don't want to remain in fixed rate and floating rate debt if you remember your corporate treasury risk management case which we did there was a there was an aspect of that where the the uh, Australian dollar loan was in floating rates. Yes, Remember, we never got around to discussing that yes, because uh, I had not had the time to discuss interest rate risk management strategies with you. Okay, so if you look at uh, this, if you want to look at a comprehensive view of interest rate risk management and foreign exchange risk management, you can just cover both the sections of this book. You'll get a co very comprehensive overview, and that is pretty comprehensive now because even now, not much has changed in terms of range of instruments. Okay, only one instrument is not covered there. There is a CDA which is anyway that was not part of foreign exchange or interest uh, it, well CDS is within interest rates so that CDS is not covered credit default swaps okay because at that time in 1993 when I was writing that there was no active market in CDS CDS market started only in the late 90s and 2000s okay all right so is this question clear to you what is the concern we are trying to essentially cons we are now Intel has borrowed and using an FRN at 75 basis point with just 75 basis points over LIBOR over three month LIBOR which is the most common floating rate benchmark in international capital markets okay now they are looking for an equivalent kind of rate further down the line because their loan is for 10 years 
okay and they are concerned that in floating rates might rise so what can they do okay so what one of the things that they can do and this will also help us to understand the extension of the euro dollar deposit yield curve okay uh, further down the uh, for, for longer maturities okay what is the so the question is what is the equivalent of the euro dollar deposit yield curve for longer maturities okay and the answer is of course the irs curve and we are going to just see what the irs curve is irs stands for interest rate swap yes so in the euro dollar deposit yield curve is the LIBOR rates for all the so somebody asked you what is the euro dollar deposit issue plot the euro dollar deposit yield curve for swiss francs for today for today okay because remember yield curve is a what kind of a chart is it a time series chart or a cross sectional chart cross who said time series cross somebody here said time series cross -sectional. any yield curve it's is always a cross sectional data chart okay it is a snapshot at a point of time so if i ask you what is the u.s treasury yield curve for last night you go to the u.s treasury yield curve uh, the u.s treasury home page and then you find out what the closing rates for last night were for all those different maturities and then you can join the points and construct the curve okay so therefore uh, the yeah this is a good question that helps you to cl clarify your understanding a euro dollar deposit yield curve if i ask you to plot the euro dollar deposit yield curve for japanese yen for today what you'll go you just what you're going to do is you're just going to wait till the live off fixing in london today and see what was the japanese yen euro dollar deposit for one month what was the rate what was the rate for three months what was the rate for nine months what was the rate for 12 months and then you join the plots and that is your euro dollar deposit yield curve for japanese yen for today so for any cross-sectional data chart you have to uh, essentially show which variable or variables are being plotted you have to specify that that's why i said japanese yen deposits okay not swiss franc deposits or us dollar or japanese yen deposits you have to specify that and you have to specify the date on which the snapshot is being taken the point in time at which the snapshot has been taken is this clear yes. okay so as the irs uh, is uh, the irs stands for interest rate swap the irs curve is what we need to be aware of because this is all part of your understanding of uh, debt capital markets because the understanding of interest rate swaps or all kinds of swaps actually these are uh, these these swaps are, are what i've called capital market swaps because they're all intimately connected with capital market issues okay so that's why they are called capital market swaps so let's look at what is an irs look at the intel decision problem okay now look at figure two so figure two on page seven okay let's bring back this information from above so we know which one we are talking about to get us quick uh, look at it so this is due 2026 is let's make it 10 years okay price at 75 now if uh, intel treasury uh, prefers fixed rates uh, refers to lock in a fixed rate for all 10 years is this point is this uh, risk management problem clear to everybody yes, that risk, intel has just raised money through the debt capital markets by issuing an frn for 10 years at 75 basis points over libor but they are not comfortable being exposed to a floating rate because three month libor is going to get fixed every three months so if interest rates start rising after two three years they might find that they are in hot water okay so they would want what they want to do as a risk management problem is they want to lock in this entire cost of borrowing for this loan for 10 years they want to lock into a fixed rate okay so here what happens is here what they one of the things they can do they can do many things but one of the things they can do the most simple i mean the simplest instrument they can use is an interest rate swap okay so here you replace uh, abc in corp with uh, with intel so figure two page seven which i keep keep forgetting okay yes it is a hedge this is a hedge okay because what is that going to do think about it what is the definition of a hedging transaction yes chadda let's chadda has opened his mouth which is a rare occasion he normally does not talk yes give him the mic let's see if, if he knows how to use the mic yes 
So we should make you sit on the first bench more often so that you talk more often. Yes. yes. Use the mic. Mic has voice has to be coming through the mic. Reduce the risk. Anyway, to reduce the risk, yes, you you, want, you have not expressed it perfectly, but you got the real point of, an, of a hedging transaction. One minute. The hallmark of a hedging transaction is a transaction which will reduce the overall risk. Okay, the total risk. Okay, it will reduce the total risk of the the first transaction on a hedger's book will always reduce the. So if you take this as the first transaction, it will reduce the risk. Is this clear? Okay. So uh, this is the point. So good that you remember that part. Now, does this meet the criteria? Let's apply that test because Sahil has already jumped to the conclusion that this is a hedging transaction. Okay. When I showed him refer figure two, um, figure two, page seven. RMS, you will understand. RMS stands for Risk Management Solutions. Okay. This book has been shared with you. Okay, so you can look at it. Now, uh, I'll make it downloadable as well so that you can download this. Okay, now figure to page seven. What are we saying? Figure to page seven. Look at this. One sec. Guys, please be quiet. Now, uh, look at this floating rate lender. Figure to page seven. Look at the floating rate lender. This is, let's say, the consortium of banks which has managed their foreign okay for uh, Intel. Okay, now what is happening? An ABC replace ABC with Intel okay they have borrowed money from this uh, so understand something as remember what was the other characteristic of a hedging transaction did it disturb the underlying position no, sir. no. it is sitting on as a parallel uh, uh, transaction it is shadowing the underlying position book so you don't disturb the underlying positions okay that is another feature of a hedging transaction it is uh, it is sitting on top of the underlying position okay so it's a separate level so you notice that the first thing so here what you have right now is in fact maybe we should just um, yeah so what you have figure one and figure two we can see them together okay so look at this the cash flow can you see the labeling there cash flow for unhedged exposure yes, yes. okay so this is the original uh, period when they have taken the FR, they have issued the frn okay so this six month LIBOR let's replace it mentally with three month LIBOR because in our example is three month LIBOR it doesn't really matter even six month LIBOR is risky because it can keep on changing what is this uh, transaction you're doing is this a hedging transaction what is this transaction then I'll deduct marks for you guys also because we don't want to see all this uh, activity no, there is no pen this is not an exam which team is this? <laughs> so this goes to minus two and uh, one sec. Minus six. What happened here? Okay, now one minute, one sec, one sec. So this time that they're on the same team. This team is higher up this is Gary's team oh, Gary's team has opened uh, their account okay all right okay <laughs> okay guys quiet now cat where will we so figure one and two all right figure one and two so six month LIBOR replace it mentally with three month LIBOR, ABC replace it with Intel and the floating rate lender is the consortium that has lent, uh, that has bought their FRN. Okay, normally FRNs would be sold to investors. Okay, this is not a, this is not a loan actually, it's a, it's a, it's a debt capital market issue. So uh, it's bought by a bunch of, so let's think of them as the floating rate lender as the, the, the group of investors that has bought the FRN. So here in the, in figure one, can everyone see figure one? Yes, Okay, so in figure one, Intel is exposed to floating rate risk because this loan is going to run for 10 years and three month LIBOR is going to reset every three months. So you don't know what the next three months, uh, the next quarter's interest rate is going to be. It could be anything, whatever happens to interest rates. Okay, so therefore they are not happy with this figure one situation because they fear that their total interest cost might go up dramatically. So now they want to hedge it. They want to hedge this exposure. Okay, so because anytime you move from because the other characteristic of hedging is that you end up with uh, certain cash flows okay you end up with certain whenever you go from uncertain cash flows to certain cash flows it is a hedging transaction are you reducing your risk or not yes. 
Yes. Okay. Whenever you go from uncertain cash flows to certain cash flows, Aryan is not convinced. Yes. Nor is Bivu. Yes. <coughs> Anytime you go from uncertain uh, in figure one, are the cash flows uncertain over ten years? Yes. Are the debt servicing cash the debt servicing cost over ten years? <coughs> is it uncertain, Bivu? Yes. In figure one, is it uncertain or certain? Uncertain, uncertain right? Because this floating rate will reset every three months. Yeah. Although we are looking at six month level, we want to change it to three months. Okay, so uh, so let's uh, just read that as three months. Okay, so it is uncertain because every three months it's going to reset. You don't know what it's going to be. So another characteristic of a hedging transaction is anytime you uh, convert from uh, when you change from uncertain cash flows to certain cash flows, you are uh, reducing the risk. Okay, because risk is essentially associated with uncertainty. Okay. All right. So, therefore, one of the things they can do is this: this particular transaction will be called an interest rate swap. Okay. The second can everyone see figure two? Okay. All right. So, figure two, what happens is now typically most interest the standard quotation of it. The figure two, the additional transaction that you see between SCB, okay, and uh, ABC, the additional transaction that you see, that transaction is the interest rate swap. So make sure that you understand what an important instrument to understand. Okay, very a very high volume of interest rate transactions, interest rate swap transactions are done all over the world every year. This has almost become a commoditized uh, product. Okay, in the interest rate derivative markets. Okay, this is a derivative transaction. Okay, so the one that you see, the two cash flows that you see, they are swapping cash flows. A swap. Why is this called a cash swap? Because a swap means an exchange. Okay. I swap my phone with yours, which means you give me your phone, I give you my phone. That's what a swap means, right? So here, interest rate swap. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. Interest rate swap is uh, swapping of cash flows. What is happening is one party. So ABC, you can see what's happening on the on the on the screen, right? Everyone can see what's going on. Okay. Now, can you see why this acts as a hedge? And what is the net cost of debt for uh, ABC after doing the, the doing the swap? What is the net cost of debt? Net means uh, including now including both the underlying position and the hedge position. Okay, so doing the swap when they do the swap, that's a hedge transaction. Okay, and now this position that they have in the swap, that's a hedge position where they are paying uh, they are paying the fixed rate. Okay, so in the language of swaps. Uh, we just say paying, paying and receiving. That is automatically meant to refer to the fixed rate. So in the swaps market, no one is going to say we are paying the fixed rate. People will just say we are paying, or they'll just say we are receiving. That is meant to refer to the fixed rate. Okay. So if someone in the swaps market says we are receiving on a swap, that means that they are receiving the fixed rate in the swap. Okay. In the swap, there will be two two rates. In a simple interest rate, this is called a fixed for floating interest rate swap. Okay, floating to fixed or whatever it is, fixed to floating, floating to fixed, depending on where you were originally. Okay, so in the swaps rate, in the swaps market, this is called here. What we say is, ABC in Figure Two has decided to pay on an IRS. To pay on an IRS swaps market lingo automatically means that they are paying the fixed rate. Okay, and they are automatically they are paying the fixed rate in a fixed floating IRS. If they are paying the fixed rate in a fixed floating IRS, that means they have to be receiving the uh, floating rate. Okay, just like in a base asset terms asset, if I'm selling the base asset, automatically that means that I'm buying the base. Uh, they're buying the terms asset, yes. right? So in a fixed for floating interest rate swap, just make sure you understand this transaction. So the transaction that you should study on your own is this. We have explained there are many categories of swaps. So this is the category for the moment that you have to worry about is this category. Okay. Floating to fixed or fixed to floating. That that's the same transaction essentially. That only this is only referring to what is your initial underlying position. Okay. So floating to fixed or fixed to floating IRS. Okay. This transaction you have to make sure you understand. Okay. What happened? Oh, you're, it's already 15 minutes to go. Okay. All right. Leave. Okay. Okay. So this deal is. Please make sure that you, you arrange this between yourselves. I will only allow one person to leave in a particular uh, session. Okay, you can if there's some urgency or something, you can leave 15 minutes, uh, maximum 15 minutes before the end of the class. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, is everyone clear about this transaction now? 
have you understood this transaction you read this from here and make sure you understand the, the instrument that we want to understand it's a category of swap okay you remember your asset classes markets instruments framework yes, sir. it falls under swaps okay and this will fall under the row of uh, under under debt the asset class is debt and the instrument is swap okay so this is an interest rate swap okay it'll be in that box okay so there are many other types of interest rate swaps but at the moment we are just looking at this uh, kind of uh, interest rate swap the simplest category so abc has done a simple irs fit for floating irs with scb is this clear so what is the total after doing the swap what is the net cost of debt guy for uh, for uh, abc tell me what is the net cost of debt for abc in this chart what are you guy 6.38 percent is everyone clear why that is the net cost of debt middle middle wake up are you clear why that is the net cost of debt is six point sorry you didn't hear but did you hear what guy said okay good okay gupta Gupta means I only call Akshit. Akshit I call Akshit. Okay. No, him I call Rahul. Okay. Just like uh, uh, Siddharth Goel is called Goel and Sahil Goel is called Sahil. Okay. Yes, Gupta. You understood why? Why guy is saying that the net cost of debt is six point three eight percent? Not understood. I've already explained now you go and read it okay I just want to, want to see whether you make sure that you understand this stuff okay this you have to do on your own okay you read this since it's recorded you pre-play it I don't want to wait more class time because we are not able to move into the options module we are covering but these are all important things it, it, this is part of your debt capital markets uh, very important to understand debt capital markets how they operate okay so this is one of the reasons so has everyone understood this you have an idea of what's going on they are changing from their floating rate uh, liabilities they are effectively the total cost the total exp the net exposure is all that matters once you have done a hedge you are not concerned with the underlying alone okay you are concerned and you're not concerned only with the hedge you are concerned with the aggregate okay hedge position plus to plus underlying position okay so therefore the net position has gone now they have achieved their goal now if you replace abc with intel can you see that they have locked in a fixed rate of borrowing for 10 years is everyone clear about that yes. they have locked in so this is one of the simplest ways to manage interest rate risks uh, risk and that is to do a fix using a fix for floating or floating to fixed interest rate swap okay now the question might arise that uh, the question that would arise is okay uh, why did uh, you could logically ask this question why did Intel not directly issue fixed rate bonds you could ask why bother to go and catch your ear like this why not directly go and uh, issue fixed rate bonds if you are not interested in floating rate debt why not go directly and issue fixed rate bonds is that a valid question yes sir. okay so the question the, the answer to that will give you some idea about debt capital markets and how they operate remember that yes given the mic <laughs> Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sir, please uh, explain. Please throw some light on CDS. <laughs> CDS we will not do now because CDS is a totally different category of instruments. 3D is referring to credit default swaps. Okay. So I maybe I'll give you some material because we won't have time to refer to credit. One thing you can understand about CDS: a CDS is not a swap in the sense that this is a swap. So that is actually bad terminology. CDS is bad terminology the market has come up with. A CDS is actually not a swap. It's actually a, a exotic type of option. In in this book, you will also find a discussion of. Um, let me just write this much at least as as a thing. You will come across this term very often because this is a big uh, CDS today is a very uh, popular product. Okay, everyone knows what CDS stands for. Credit default swap. That much you should know. Okay, CDS stands for credit default swap. Okay. Have you got have you guys got your textbooks by now? Yes, sir. Okay. So even in your textbook, the CDS has not been properly de described. It's been described as a doom uh, as, as a T part of the money put option. That is also not fully correct. It's actually a barrier type of option. It's an exotic option. Okay, credit default swap is a is most 
similar to a barrier barrier put option okay um, if you want to know what a barrier option is we won't have a barrier option is an exotic exotic option but it's described in this book where you're seeing the chart of uh, irs okay so barrier options you can read up on what barrier options are uh, uh, on your own okay though not exactly the same but it's actually is more similar to a barrier suit option a cds is not a swap okay not a swap uh, as in irs or fx swap okay the two categories of swaps that we are going to uh, study is basically uh, um, the capital market swaps such as the irs and the foreign exchange swap okay which is basically nothing but it's just like a repo it's a intra-market uh, spread okay so these are the two categories these uh, it's, these instruments have been in place for many years 20 30 years in the financial markets so when they came up with a new instrument called a cds in 2000 early 2000 they should not have used the word swap okay because these the word swap already had a very specific meaning okay so it's bad terminology but the market does this a lot so remember that cds i'll only tell you this much at this point and the definition in the book is also not correct they've called it a depot of the money put option it's it can be made more specific than that it's actually a barrier put option okay and you can read up on barrier options in this book okay so now point is that this uh, irs they've done this irs and come up with this situation everybody's understood this situation okay so essentially now one minute so let's say uh, now intel is slightly worse than a double a credit because they had to pay 75 basis points over libor if they were a pure double a double a credit they would have paid flat libor okay that's called libor flat when the basis point margin is zero if you borrow at li like these guys are borrowing here abc incorporated is a double a rated credit because they borrowed at libor flat are you following what is meant by libor flat libor flat means there is no interest margin ab above libor Okay. Exact LIBOR. Fix whatever six month LIBOR is, that's all they will pay. That means that they are a double A credit. But Intel has paid 75 basis points over LIBOR. That means they are a uh, worse than double A credit. We don't know exactly what the rating is, but they are worse than double A. Now the question is. So there can be any other reason also for paying the higher. No, the only other reason is the credit risk. The only reason is the credit risk. Okay. So that is the pricing of that reflects the pricing of their credit risk for 10 years. Okay. All right now what happens is look at this this 6.38 which is called the interest rate swap rate okay so the normal mature normal uh, normally interest rate ra uh, irs uh, rates are quoted against three month libor okay this transaction is against six month libor so now just look at the irs rates so this 6.38 is the irs rate so can you see that it is the equivalent okay if you assume that let's forget the intel example if you assume that abc had borrowed and we are talking about abc so can you see that this 6.38 is like a 10 year LIBOR rate? No, no, what I'm saying is assuming that this ABC loan is also for 10 years. Okay, what have I written here? Then there must be some mention of the year maturity here. Um, five year. Okay, this is a five year example that I've given you. Okay, so here can you see that if they have borrowed for five, if they've done a five year IRS at 6.38 percent, okay so can you see that earlier they had borrowed at six month LIBOR now they have converted that into a five year interest rate of 6.38 percent can you see that therefore in this case the 6.38 is like the five year LIBOR rate yes are you following what I'm saying yes. because I've been able to swap my liability pure from flat LIBOR to a 6.38 rate which means another way of putting this is to say that the 6.38 is like a five year LIBOR rate the five year equivalent of LIBOR because earlier I was borrowing six month LIBOR flat and now I just converted it into 6.38 and that's all I had to pay. I might have had to pay seven and a half if that was the rate, but in this case the market rate was 6.38. Is everyone following this point? It is effectively like a five year I was borrowing in LIBOR in the money market. The equivalent rate for LIBOR is for five years is 6.38 okay so now these interest rate swaps how they're actually how did this 6.38 rate come about how did the 6.3 rate rate come about let's look at the quotation for interest rate swaps class is over
Oh, we have still got two, uh, three minutes. We can finish this job, one minute. You can see how many types of swaps exist. Okay, guys, now let's let's finish this in two minutes. Then you can hear the video. Since it's recorded, you can listen to this. Understand this concept. We are trying to. We were trying to answer this question of how. What is the equivalent of the uh, euro dollar deposit yield curve beyond the twelve month period? Is that right? Okay. So then we looked at some ten year, five year interest rate. We see that ABC did a five year interest rate swap where they were moving to. They were able to move from six month LIBOR to six point three eight. Okay, which means for five years the equivalent rate for LIBOR because they were able to swap it, so it's the equivalent rate in the eyes of the market. Are you following? If I am able to take one um, one mobile phone from you and I am giving you one mobile phone of mine, that means those two are the same. Yes. Otherwise, why am I agreeing to exchange? Yes, okay. So therefore, if I am exchanging, if I am able to exchange my what I did in that swap structure that you saw, I was paying fixed point three eight and I was receiving LIBOR flat a uh, six month LIBOR flat. Okay, that means I'm able to exchange six month LIBOR for six point three eight. That means the fixed rate equivalent for five years of six month LIBOR was six point three eight. Okay, so that's why we say that the IRS curve. That's why I've written the statement that the IRS curve essentially is IRS curve means nothing. That but the IRS rates for different maturities: two year IRS rate, five year IRS rate. Plot them and then draw a line to join them. Okay, so the IRS curve will be the extension of the euro dollar deposit curve. Because it exchanges against LIBOR flat. Are you following? Yes. Okay. Now, last point: How are IRS is quoted? Because it's meant to reflect the credit spread part of it. This is how I how five years. How did you get to six point three eight? Okay. This here it may not add up, but it would have been. You look at the Treasury yield. IRS IRS prices are also quoted as a spread to Treasury, just like debt is priced. Remember, we discussed debt pricing for Saudi Arabia. Okay, how do you discuss the debt pricing? As credit spread, not as an absolute rate. I'm willing to pay 310 basis points over treasuries for 30 years, 165 for 10 years, etc. Okay. Similarly, IRS prices are also quoted as a spread to treasuries. You see this pricing? Check this pricing here on page 13. Okay, figure 15 on page 13 of that book. Okay, swap spread. This is how you get the swap rate. You take the treasury yield, if you want to know the 5 year swap rate, you look at the swap spread and you add the swap spread to the treasury yield and that's how you get the swap rate. No great mystery here because you have already seen this in the case of corporate debt pricing. Wait for 2 minutes, the important point will cover it. Okay, is this clear? No new method is being shown to you here because you have already understood the pricing of corporate debt exactly the same way. Okay, treasury yield plus the corporate credit spread gives you the total cost of debt okay ishan is very impatient but just wait for two two minutes two minutes we are almost done okay but this is an important point i want to cover this and so that next class we move straight into options okay uh, so is this point clear to everyone okay so this is the, this is just how, so that's why we are saying so the irs curve essentially is the extension of the euro dollar deposit curve for longer maturity maturity is longer than 12 months okay and please remember last class last minute discussion with sahil and gamma please also that's also part of your syllabus okay if you don't understand then call me